So and I see happened. Tony D'Angelo and Stax defeated the Dades. Um, Ivy Nile uh, showed up, uh, basically distract uh, the the Dades. And there was like two people who are dressed up as the Dades, whatever servants, and it might be just a diamond mine or whatever. Who cares? Good seeing the Tony D and Stax window. The vignette for Eddie Trump trying to repair his fighting spirit before saying that he has his eyes on D Jack and like, who cares? Merle Hayes was uh, signing multiple pieces of merchandise, but then Wesley confronted him. Lee says that I would get a shot at the title, but but Hayes, uh, but Hayes told him that he has to win against D Jack to get back uh, back him afterwards. Uh, and again, they proceed to basically show the case that they're the same character, so like I don't really care, and there's not much of a story, just like, yo man, me and we, oh, we, we black and shit, man, we just gotta be the best race, we gotta showcase we being the best racers and shit, man, she uh, Andre Chase, uh, talked to, uh, they spoke to Tia Hale backstage, her, uh, Duke Hudson, uh, but Hale was, like, respond by telling Chase that she, she, he should not throw in the towel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Dave, that, that, their, or uh, whatever, Blair Davenport defeats Dana Brooke, which, and, uh, whatever, no one cares. Rick Williams defeats Drew Gulak, uh, whatever. Brooke Jensen, Josh Briggs attacks, uh, Drew Gulak's buddies or whatever, so, okay. So that we do get, like, a vignette by Daba Kato or whatever. Aaron Corp, then we get Aaron Corbin come out saying that Gable Stevenson would not ha- come back to NXT that every, uh, and uh, that everyone is in the back of a bunch of little bitches. Bo- Corbin stated that he's aiming to be back in the movement where he belongs. And then Von Wagner and Mr. Stone confronts Corbin before Wagner to get his ass tabled. Wagner and Corbin brawl. Basically what happens, like, you know, oh, you can he talk and that he doesn't talk. I don't know. Um, they eventually brawled a little bit, and yeah, this is leading to them facing each other for some reason. I don't know, because, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, definitely wondering why Gable Stevenson is not showcased or whatever. Um, I guess because of the whole backlash, and again, the whole Me Too shit is definitely affecting Gable Stevenson. Rhea and Dominic were talking backstage and before they were called up by Lara Valkyrie and Dragon Lee to a mixed tag match at Heat Wave. Eventually, uh, Lara Valkyrie and Dragon Lee, Dragon Lee tells Lara, like, you have the passion or whatever. That's... Yeah, mommy, you got the passion. Because you love the vine. Mustafa Ali, uh, we get a video of him trying to act like a, he has a political campaign to win the North American Championship and some people to believe in Ali. So he's basically trying to be like Bo Dallas and get it. Oh, you know, I, I'm I'm a Democrat or something. Basically, he's going to be the anti-Trump or whatever. It's like, who gives a shit? Yeah, very edgy, very, uh, very complaining, very topical. Wesley defeats uh, D-Jack. Um, good for him or whatever. Then we do get the Dragon Lee and Live over here talking and how they're going to team next week or whatever. Tyler Bate versus Joe Coffey ends at no contest because Dabby Cato attacks both of them. Raker confronts Baron Corbin in the parking lot where Corbin stated that he has an eye in Corbin's match against Braun Wagner next week. Corbin responds by saying that Breaker intimidates anyone in NXT but him. So I don't know, Braun Breaker's kind of going to become like the anti-hero in a way because Baron Corbin's like, I don't know, whatever it is, what it is. Nathan Frazier hosts a new episode of Hitting... Hard hitting home truth, but was interrupted by the metaphor. And Dar promises that to win back the Heritage Cup, and Fraser got a giant red fraud button and presses it imme- a red repeatedly to immediately uh, Dar uh, to interrupt Dar before Dar promised to tell Fraser apart. So basically, he has another fake uh, Heritage Cup. C. Jane defeats Tia Hale. Uh, uh, whatever. We get a vignette, a video, a vignette of Los Otarios narrating the late Umberto uh, Garza. Eventually, we see Carmelo finishing uh, his autographs, and he's uh, confronted by Wes Lee. Lee tells Hayes that, uh, that he's waiting until next week before taking a table to the ring and um, t- impromptu contract signing. Yeah, this is really exciting with these two, apparently. We do get a video package of Tiffany Stratton. I promise that she'll be a heat weight next week, and then we get this impromptu contract signing which 
I'm sorry, but like, who really cares about this contract signing? Who really cares about this match when there's really no story with this match? And again, they're basically the same people. Okay, I'm sorry, they're the same people, and they don't really have like. Again, I'm not really a big fan. Like, I know indie fans are gonna like because you know they like these type of wrestlers. All these people who like midgets or whatever. Like, I'm not, again, I have no problem with wrestlers who are smaller or whatever, but they need to have a personality and charisma. Again, theirs doesn't help when they have the same type of character, and there's not really, like, a heat with this feud, so why should we care about this? Wesley and Carmelo Hayes have an impromptu contract signing ahead of their match next week, but Lee said that he's always had to fight from underneath and being in the mil- uh, being into the, in the military from uh, to tradition transitioning since the Singles competitor, but he always made sure to doubt, turn doubters into believers. Hayes says he understood uh, Lee's sentiment, but told Lee that he cannot be him. Lee fired back and saying that he would not fail any more before signing the contract. Hayes tells Lee to not chase waterfalls before signing the contract. Lee then leaps over a tail and tells Hayes that he will see him at heat wave before the broadcast. Ends. Like he, like this is what he literally does. He just jumps and breaks the table, like, yeah, very intriguing. Like, yeah, break the table. <laughs> Basically, like, instead of getting a table spot, I mean, like, th- does this even need a table spot? But, like, whatever. Very intriguing. Like, and, like, I'm sorry, but it's not like it was badass. Like, oh, wow, he jumped onto our table. It's like, I'm not really that intrigued. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. No one cares about NXT. It's just how it is. The show is just whatever. Admissible show, people. All right, let's be for real here. That's all I'm saying. Just keep it real. Get your games called Mike Nisley. Find me some pictures of the old show. Shit, I'll say till next time. Peace. Yeah, bye. NXT, not worth watching. I guess, like, you know, maybe that's why they need people from the main roster to carry. Because who cares? It's just whatever. But yeah, they're going to have a glorified pay-per-view next week. It's like, whatever.